this prediction that's right up here. Or just yell at Larry Brooks like every other New York Ranger. <laughs> so this week, um, it still makes no sense to me why the New York Mets had to start doing this. It makes perfect sense maybe why to them, but that they had to then tell it to all their fans. No, just have it as an inside comment. You don't need to tell everybody everything. But what is the purpose of going against the fans? Anyone that's ever gone against the fans has not won. No one. It, the, nobody has ever beat the fans. The, the player could be on the team, let's say a great player. It's on the team 15, 16 years. A fan's been rooting for them their entire lives. And all you're going to do is just drive the fan away, which is something you don't want to ever happen. So where Javier Baez really didn't understand that you get booed. It happens in New York. Well, you didn't get booed in Chicago. You don't get booed in Boston. But is everybody always, always cheer or is there orange slices after the game? Is that, is that what you're getting? There's no score. You don't have to worry about that. We're investing um, uh, a night's, a week's pay, sometimes maybe even, who knows, could be like two weeks with the amount of uh, the tickets or the amount the beers are or the amount that our merchandise I might want to buy. That's why you don't fight the fans, you moron. Now, came out yesterday, hustled, the fans cheered him. That's what it is. But that's how, look, I'm not arguing about whether or not you should boo or not boo, but certainly don't attack the fans. It's not the fans' fault that you were over five last week with five strikeouts. So that's just ridiculous. And if you want to do it, it'd be like, it's us against the world. Good. Keep that to yourself. Because then what happens is all the fans want to turn against you. And you know that big contract you're looking for? You're going to have to find that somewhere else. You don't take markets out by just saying, yeah, I don't want to play there. Because that's what you're saying. And then eventually with that, don't fight the fans. We have invested countless amounts of dollars in all these, in, in all these games over the years. And, the matter, and, and even better, we got memories. So plenty of people have come to New York. Um, Mike Piazza is another one that comes to mind. I'm actually trying to think of some hockey guys. Not many guys were ever booed coming in. But they've earned the respect of everybody around here, and now their name is Gold. F find anybody that truly hates Mark Bessier. The guy's a legend. The guy can't go anywhere and buy, and, and buy a drink because everybody would buy it for him. So if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. That's what Frank Sinatra said, and it's very true. So... Uh, and guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you in on this. Is this was was this something that you that you looked at and went, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, I don't know what the the motivating factor is behind that, but you don't ever tell fans that they don't have a right to boo or not to boo them. It, it just it's stupid. Like you said, we pay their salaries. You know, if it's not for us, there's nothing. You know, they, they can play in front of empty arenas. They can play for cable networks with nobody watching. And what happens? Your business folds. So it's it's our hard-earned money. It's our our eyes on the TV sets. It's us turning the channels to the, the, the networks that they're on to watch them play that pays their money. So... If they want to go tell us to not boo them, they can shove it up their asses for all I care. Uh, and and Lindor and Baez, you've been in New York for a minute, so I don't I don't know what you had, where you get the stones to turn around and tell people to not boo. But I was just it was stupid, absolutely stupid. And Derek Jeter got booed and took it like a man. He took it like a man, and he held himself accountable like a leader does. And that's why Derek Jeter is regarded as one of the greatest leaders in the history of professional sports. Because of the fact that he handled himself under pressure with grace and produced. And when he wasn't playing well, he took it personally 
on himself and held himself accountable for his poor play, not shaming the fans for having an opinion. Just dumb. I don't know what really else there is to say about that, but it's stupid. And just just before Anthony gets on in, and I, I want you to get right back in, uh, CJ said oh, the Bruins beat our fans once, and Chris said Mike Milbury with the yeah. show is dangerous. <laughs> um, but yeah. Joe Grave, one hundred percent right. Um, Stanton, Stanton's gotten Sam got booed his first week, and he has gotten just ro- the fans rode him like a horse. And you know something? He took it like a man. That's what he did. City of Vancouver boos Mark Messier, but that's with good reason. <laughs> Mark Messier is great, but uh, that's, you know, it's a different matter. The feeling uh, today, feelings matter. No, they need what we need to tell people is to shut the hell up. Anthony, get back in here before I say something stupid. Uh, yeah, it's just dumb. I mean, listen, when, you're, when you sign up to be a professional athlete, you live a glorious life, you get paid millions of dollars, and you get to play a sport for a living. But you got you have to take the negatives with it. You have to have tough skin. Fans are allowed to boo you. If you're not performing, you get booed. This is what it is. It's how it is sometimes. You have no right to tell them what they can or cannot do. Zero right at all. You take it. You put in your big boy pants. You don't like booing. You you play better, and then you get loved. Just how it goes. Um, you look on a lot of a lot of teams across the league in the NHL, like on power plays. If it, if it's like really struggling, and especially if you're losing on top of that. A lot of fans boo every time the puck gets cleared out. You get it's, it's what it's, it's what. It's can what can I on. can I just stop you and and say three words right there? New York Rangers. Yeah, shoot the puck, Barry. Yeah, shoot yeah the it's, puck. it's 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 what happens. So it's it's stupid. They should just you know shut your mouth and realize um, it's just one of the very few the negatives, if you want to call it, of being pressed out. But you have to deal with the criticism. Too, it can't all be like roses and sunshine. So, um, fans are allowed to do what they want. Yeah, sure, you have some fans who are a little over the top and a little too ridiculous. But for the most part, you know, fans are going to cheer you when you're doing well, and they're going to boo you when you're playing poorly. It's just how it is. Got to deal with it. And and you know what? It's just look. And and first up, by the way, Sandy Alderson putting out the the statement. Uh, Every fan has a right to boo. Which, I mean, first off, if we if you take away booing from the fans, then there's no more critiquing anything. No more critiquing movies, video games, whatever you want to say. That, um, it's, yeah, it's a I, I don't, critique. Do, do I want to boo anybody? No. I don't, actually, I don't, for the most part. I mean, as far as the Rangers go, I think there's two players I've ever booed. Or one time when I booed. The, the team in general, and that was the year after Messier left, uh, 97, uh, late, in, late in the season. I was one of the people that booed because it was a game against Buffalo. They were lifeless. It was just awful. And, I, and I'll admit that I do that. I don't really boo players. I don't want to boo players. I want to cheer everyone. But I'm not going to say that. The guy sitting in front of me can't boo anybody. Oh no, don't do that. You got to worry about the player's feelings. Go fuck yourself. If the, if a if a boo from a fan is so bad, get out of here. You're not mentally tough. Yeah, you, you're you're not you're not meant to play this sport if you can't handle criticism from fans. And if if you're gonna do that, it, it, it's the equivalent of fa- uh, of fans telling other fans that they can't criticize the moves a team makes. If you can't have an opinion on something, what the hell is the point? What what is the point? I, I just, you know what? I don't want to go anywhere else with it because I see comments and I, I don't want to get into that. We're just going to stick to what this is. I'm going to stick to what this is in itself, but it's a form of gatekeeping and gatekeeping is stupid. It's dumb. It, 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 it You know what? You go out there, you pay for that network with your money that you earn at your job to watch those games. Whether you're watching it through out-of-market packages if you don't live in New York or if you're paying for MSG and you go and pay money to go to the games, to buy their merchandise, to get their autographs, to meet these players and meet and greets and stuff, you're spending – when you when you look at it and you actually do the numbers from a financial standpoint – 
over the lifetime, the average sports fan spends a very good portion of what they earn in their life towards these organizations. You don't realize it, but it adds up over the years. So don't tell me that I don't have a right to boo you. And don't, yeah, exactly. We have to let the team know how we feel. The fire say their chance were there for a reason in the dark ages, in like 2002, three, and four. You know what? They were there for a reason because Sather wasn't doing a good job. He wasn't. You know, he, as a coach, he he was bad in New York. The, sure, the team was bad, but he was bad as a coach. So don't tell us what we can and can't feel or can and can't say. You have no right. Otherwise, the fans should turn around and say, you know what? Screw you. We're walking away. Have fun finding someone else to pay your damn overbloated salaries to play a kid's game. I mean, take, for instance, uh, let me throw one player out there uh, for you that he he was getting paid, he was under underachieving, and he was kind of a burden to the Rangers. That was Wade Redden. And but the thing about Wade Redden is he still tried. He was he was at practice longer. He was he actually took it badly. Anthony's back with us again. He had, he took it badly when um Tom Rennie got fired because he said, I feel like I was one of the guy one of the reasons why he got fired. And the answer on that is yeah, yeah. You were. But you know something, the effort, he was still trying to put forward the effort. I just think his, his skills were eroding. That was the only problem. But yeah. I mean, and I, and in a way I feel bad for Wade Redden, even though sending him to the minors was the best move for the team, but it's just, there is still, um, yeah, Slats loved Wade Redden, but there are still guys that there, there were guys that, that just dog it. We've seen it. And of course that's number one reason why New Yorkers boo. But it just it happens. And look, if that if that's the case, turn it around or don't. And then just get out. To, there's lots of guys that I mean, you don't have to follow a guy to his house like Ed Whitson. Um, or you don't have to end up getting so frustrated that you end up giving the finger to uh, the crowd. Jack, but I mean, Theo Fleury had a bad first season and then a couple pretty good years with the Rangers amidst personal problems. And we found out what that was. And after that, it was, I, I, I don't remember people really booing him. Although I, I, I was at the game when he came back with Chicago. I can't remember if they did. Yeah. I, I don't think anybody booed Theo Fleury. It was the Islander fans that really chanted crack at Theo at him, which was really disappointing. That was a rather classless chant, but um I mean, uh, what uh, Dan put it up here before. Dennis Popin had some chants from the Ranger fans. Yeah, those so, were pretty classless as well. Yeah, so I mean, but this, sometimes it's what New Yorkers we we do. We we want to get under your skin. I mean, I still remember um, uh, being in the stands uh, for uh, Mets versus the Phillies, and sorry, uh, Mets versus the Giants. It was right after. Uh, uh, Barry Bonds fought Ricky Patalco, and we're just screaming, Patalco kicked your ass. Patalco kicked your ass. But um, anyway, guys, do you think the fans have a right to boo, or do you think that um, you think maybe Bias is right on this one? Uh, my personal opinion, no, he's not. You don't you don't go up against the fans. So let's. Uh, so we're gonna move on from there. You got any uh, fan stories? Throw it down, down in the comments. So if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.